Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brandon Baez from GTChicken.com here with another extremely exciting Tutorial Tuesday. Today we're going to be going over something that is a really, really neat effect that I actually came up with by myself. And that in itself is <laughs> pretty awesome if you ask me. And uh, before I get into the actual tutorial itself, there are a few things that I would like to go over with you. The first thing I want to point out is that you'll probably notice from now on, every single tutorial I put out will be in full 1080p HD, which is awesome. I had to get a new monitor for it, but it's totally worth it. It's an LED ViewSonic monitor, and it's just, ugh, oh, it's absolutely sexy. I love it. I might put a picture on Facebook later. I don't know. If you want to see that, just go to our Facebook page, like us, and all that good stuff. Another small change that you'll notice in the upcoming tutorials is that the green zooming rectangle that I used to like focus in on parts of the uh, the program, you'll notice that it's blue now instead of green. And the reason I did that is because, well, it's Photoshop. The icons are blue. Might as well have a blue zooming rectangle, right? And uh, in the future, if I get into uh, making Flash tutorials and Adobe Illustrator tutorials, those will be like red and orange and just... You know, it just kind of fits the theme of every single software that I'll be working on. So it's kind of like a color coordination thing, and I just think it'll be interesting. Oh, and one last thing before we get into the tutorial. I would really appreciate it if you guys liked this video and put comments just showing your opinion on what you liked of the tutorial when it's done. I really love it when you guys uh, like it and comment because it shows us that you actually appreciate what we're doing and that's just a really great motivation on our end to keep doing this for you guys. So uh, again, like, comment, subscribe if you haven't, like us on Facebook and all that good stuff and I don't know, I'm just, I'm just jabbering on and on so let's just get into this tutorial. So today what we'll be doing is taking an ordinary picture like this, just me sitting on a couch in a mansion and we are going to be making it into this epicness like so. BAM! So far away, it may not look like anything too special, but if you were to zoom in to 100%, let's full screen this just because it's awesome like that. Just take a good look at this, and you can see all kinds of just sexiness going on in this. You got like really nice contrasting, and you've got sharp details, everything just comes together amazingly. And in my opinion, it's kind of like a combination of the Dave Hill effect and the Dragon effect. And seeing as I don't think there's any tutorials on that, I just decided to come up with a new name for it. So I'm going to call this the Nuance effect. And that's just a word that I made up using the German word new, which is new in English, and the English word nuance, which uh, has something to do with different details and such. So those two words together create nuance, and the definition of that would be every new detail. So focus on every new detail because there's a lot. Alright, so you get the idea. It looks amazing. Uh, so let's actually show you what it looks like on a different picture. So uh, let's uh, get rid of all these effects. So here's another picture that I decided to use. It's just me in the same house, kind of smiling at the camera this time. Bam! At the same effect and it just looks freaking awesome. So it, you get the same result with different pictures. Uh, so it's pretty pretty consistent effect. So let's go ahead and delete all this and start over. Okay, so when you're choosing the picture that you want to use for this particular effect, you need to make sure that it's high quality because the higher quality the picture is, the better the effect turns out, which is kind of the standard in most effects. And another important factor in this would have to be the lighting. So in this particular picture, you'll notice that uh, there's really nice lighting on this side of my face and it just gently gets darker to the other side and then I've got this nice glint of uh, light just on the right side of my face. Left side of the picture, right side of my face. So all of that together uh, really improves the overall quality of the effect in the end. So keep that in mind. Alright, so the first thing we're going to want to do is uh, go ahead and grab our brush tool with letter B. We'll make a new layer and we'll call this Vin for Vignette. And let's go ahead and size this all the way up to the maximum 2,500 pixels, uh, depending on whatever picture it is you're using, because I have a pretty large picture. Look, 2,500 pixels doesn't even cover half of it. So, so anyway, uh, using black as your foreground color, go ahead and just very gently paint some black around the edges to give it a little bit of a, a vignette around it. So, I'll just do this just like that, and we'll zoom back in. 
and then change the blend mode of that to let's just use overlay for that and so that just gives it a nice soft vignette and so next up we'll add a black and white adjustment layer if you don't have this tab just go to window adjustments right there and let's go back to my move tool for the time being so add that black and white adjustment layer and change the preset of that to maximum black and change the opacity to 65 percent and then we'll go back and we'll add a levels adjustment layer and we'll put the black inputs to 20 the midpoint inputs to 0.83 and then when it comes to the brightness it's actually going to be different between every single picture but a good starting point is to change that to around 200 and then we'll just zoom in to 100 percent use the or hold the spacebar to pan around just to see what we're doing and so just kind of uh, change around the brightness as you see fit I already messed around with this so I know the uh, the optimum uh, brightness I guess you should I could say is hundred and eighty five oh and one quick detail that I forgot to mention before you actually start doing all of these adjustments and such it might be a good idea to clean up any acne that you might have or add in like skin smoothing or just any of those uh, little things to clean it up and make it look better because it really shows up in the end so if you want to do that do it first okay so next what we'll do is go ahead and duplicate this levels adjustment layer by hitting control J or command J if you're on a Mac and that will just uh, double up that effect and this uh, bright area right here is a little too intense for my liking so I'll go back and dampen down the whites to uh, let's just say 193 and that just very nicely softens up that little area right there and it still looks nice alright so in the middle of all this contrasting I ended up losing the brightness in my eyes and that's not something that I want to do I want to bring those back so what we'll uh, so what we'll do is go and click the back arrow add another adjustments layer for the levels and let's just go ahead and bring in the whites a lot just just like that and just focus on the eye and obviously we don't want this happening to the rest of the layer so what we'll do is make sure we have the mask for that uh, adjustments layer selected hit control I or command I if you're on a Mac to invert it and hide everything that's going on swap back to our brush tool by hitting the letter B and then let's just right click and size this down and hit enter to confirm that and then making sure you have white as your foreground color zoom in on your eye and just paint in white on your iris to bring back those colors in the eye and let's go to the other eye and we'll just bring it back right in here you can't really see it too well but at least it brought it a little bit back alright and let's actually go back and adjust this a little bit more maybe put the midtones over just a little bit and actually it looks pretty good so right now I've got 0 on the blacks 0.78 on the midtones and 70 on the whites so that's actually looking pretty good let's go ahead and move on to the next step the next thing we need to do is merge everything into its own layer so we'll do that by hitting control alt shift E or command option shift E if you're on a Mac and with this new layer uh, we'll go to filter uh, we'll do sharpen and we'll add a smart sharpen alright so what we'll do with this is put it up to a point where it won't be in the way of our picture set the amount to 190 percent and then with the radius you're just gonna kind of just inch it up and just kind of watch what happens to your picture as you start uh, just adding more radius to it and so you're just gonna get it to a point where you think it looks good is this is all a matter of opinion right here so um, personally I think somewhere between two and three looks the best at least on this particular picture so I'll just keep it right there at 2.9 if you want to toggle the more accurate option it kind of brings in uh, some of the brighter areas just a little bit but personally I don't think we need it so we'll turn that off and then we'll just go ahead and hit OK call that good and what we'll do with this is change the blend mode of this layer to lighten and then we'll duplicate that layer by hitting control J or command J change the blend mode of that layer to hard light right there and then we'll duplicate that layer again and change the blend mode back to normal and change the opacity to 65 percent 
So just a quick recap, we got the original thing right here set to lighten 100% opacity. And then we got the duplicate hard light 100%. And then that duplicate normal 65%. And so all of this together, let's turn off all three of those, just intensifies the contrasting and makes it a lot sharper. But we'll actually go ahead and take this a step further and make it even more sharp. So what we'll do is duplicate this layer again. So right now we're, we've got four copies of the same layer, pretty much. <laughs> and just for the time being, put the opacity all the way up to 100%. Then go to Filter, Other, High Pass. And then with this, uh, we'll kind of do the same thing with the, the Sharpen. We'll just set the radius at the minimum, 0.1 pixels. And then very slowly just click our way up the radius until we start seeing just those finer details. So... Right now I'm at about 2.7 and I can start seeing quite a bit of the detail going on without making it overly intense. So we'll go ahead and hit OK on that with 2.7 pixels and then change the blend mode of this layer to vivid light. And as you can see that added a lot to this picture but in some cases it's a little more than you need so we'll go ahead and tone this back down to 65%. Alright so we're most of the way there just one more thing that we have to take care of. Let's merge everything into its own layer again by hitting Control, Alt, Shift, E, or Command, Option, Shift, E if you're on a Mac. And then with this new layer that we made, we'll right click it, go to Duplicate Layer, and it will set the document to New. And then we'll hit OK. Now we'll put it into its own document. And we'll take this and go to Image, Adjustments, HDR Toning. And then it's going to say HDR Toning will flatten the image. Is that okay with you? Yes, that's perfectly fine. We're in a new document. And so when this new dialog thing comes up, uh, th well, there's going to be a lot of craziness going on. So the easiest way to go about doing this is to just ch take the preset and change it to monochromatic artistic. And then if you so choose, you can uh, open up this little toning curves and highlights dealio and click in the middle and just bring it down to the right into the middle of this box just to make everything over here a little bit darker completely optional you don't need to so with that we'll hit OK and depending on the size of your picture it might take a while to convert the, the HDR image so if you got a really huge image might as well like I don't know go check your Facebook or something while <laughs> all this finishes converting so I'll just fast forward through this real fast okay so when that's done we'll go ahead and right click the layer and hit duplicate layer and set the document back to the nuance.jpg or whatever your original picture was and hit OK. And then navigate back to your original document where everything is going on. And I'll just position this over here a little bit. And then with this layer selected, uh, the one that you've got the HDR toning on, go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And we'll just stick with a radius of 35 pixels for that. And we'll hit OK. And then we'll just keep this simple and change the blend mode of that to Soft Light. And then that just adds a nice, very soft set of contrasting to it. Alright, so let's go ahead and hit the letter F, hit the letter F again, make this full screen, zoom in to 100%, and let's take a look at this bad boy. Alright, so we are absolutely finished. This is the final product of all of our work. And if you ask me, it turned out great. It just looks amazing. And just a quick little apology to those of you that might be watching this and couldn't follow along too well because I was going a little fast, but I felt it was kind of necessary, otherwise this thing would have been like half an hour long. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, this was definitely a learning experience for me, and I hope this 1080p HD tutorial turned out well. So, again, like this video, comment, give me your opinions on the effect, or the fact that this is in 1080p, you know, just just whatever. Leave comments, let me know what you think. And that's all I have for you guys this week. I will see you next Tuesday.